Travel vacations. Project description. You are considering several cities for vacation. In particular, you're interested in Washington DC, Philadelphia, and Boston. You will format a list of memorials in DC, add spark lines to compare the number of visitors over a 15 year period, and create a bar chart to illustrate annual visitors at each memorial. In addition, you will create a table of sightseeing locations, sort and filter the data, apply conditional formatting, and add a total row to display average time needed to spend at each memorial. <clears throat> Finally, you will complete a worksheet by adding formulas to compare estimated major expenses for each day. This video will cover steps one through 11, and we will work primarily on the DC worksheet. Step two. On the DC worksheet, select the range A4 through G4, wrap the text, apply center alignment, and apply a blue accent five lighter 60% fill color. I'm going to go ahead and grab that group of data, A4 through G4, go up to my home tab, wrap text, apply center alignment. Now this is middle, this is center, and apply a blue accent five lighter 60% fill color. Blue, Accent five, lighter 80%, there's lighter 60% fill color. Step three, on the DC worksheet, merge and center the title in the range A1 through G1. Apply accent five style, cell style and bold to the title. A1 through G1, merge and center, apply accent one cell style, I'm sorry, accent five cell style, bold the title. Step four, on the DC worksheet, change the width of column A to 34. So there are two ways you could do that. You could left click on this little line between the A and the B column, hold your mouse down on the left side and drag it down to 34 until you see 34 in the width, which can be challenging. Another option is to left click on the letter A of the column, select the column, right click, left click column width, and then specify the column width here and click OK. Step five, on the DC worksheet, select the range C5 through F10 and insert line spark lines in the range G5 through G10. So I'm going to grab my mouse. I'm going to select from C5 through F10 because this is the data that I would like to show a quick trend of for each of the memorials um, for visitors in five-year increments. I want to see if the Lincoln Memorial has had an increase in uptick in the five-year um, trend for visitors or uh, if it's gone down. And I'd like to see that if that's true of all the different memorials in the DC area. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the insert tab of my home, I mean on my ribbon. Um, and spark lines are located right here in the middle to the right in it's a spark lines group. There are three different types. There's the line spark lines, the column spark lines, and a win loss spark lines. We've been asked to insert line spark lines. They are a um, quick and easy way to look at a trend instead of having to create a chart. And um, if you want to just visually see in your data if there's been an uptick or downtick in whatever the data is that you're looking at, um, sparklines are a really quick way to see a trend.
So we're going to go ahead and select that. Here you get your Create Sparklines dialog box. We've been um, told that we can insert this in the range of G5 through G10. I would suggest that you grab your mouse, left click on G5, and then um, select all the way down to G10. This will automatically uh, set an absolute reference to the location range, so you don't need to worry about typing it in and then um, absolute referencing it. We know that the data that we're pulling is from here. So based on the data and based on the range, it's going to put the trend for each year, I mean, sorry, each location per the four years. So he will see a trend for 2000, 2005, 2010, and 2015 for the Lincoln Memorial and all the way down to the Jefferson Memorial. So it'll be per row. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. You'll see the trend and the sparklines. And once the sparklines come in, you get a sparklines tools. This is a conceptual tool, again, like all the others that we've seen that only comes up when you have that concept selected. So of course, if I click outside of this, the sparkline tools disappear. If I go ahead and select that information again, the sparklines, I get my sparkline tools, which takes us to step number six. On the DC worksheet, select the range G5 through G10. Display the high point sparkline marker and change the color of the high point markers to dark blue. So I have G5 through G10 selected. I want to display the high point sparkline marker. I'm going to go ahead and click high point sparkline marker right here. And then I'm asked to change the color of the high point markers. Then we're asked to change the color of the high point markers to dark blue. So I'd like to change that marker color here for high point. I'm gonna go over here to marker color, choose high point marker, and I'm going to locate dark blue, which is down here. And you'll see they all change to dark blue. Step seven, on the DC worksheet, select the range G5 through G10. Apply same for all spark lines for both the vertical axis minimum and maximum values. So right here, this is my axis. Remember, it's only because I have it selected that I have the tools who, that show up. Sparkline axis changes the scaling and visibility of each sparkline axis for the selected sparkline group. We'd like to have it same for vertical minimum option, and we like it the same for all sparklines. Step number eight. On the DC worksheet, Select the range A4 through A10 and C4 through F10. Create a clustered bar chart. Apply the color 16 chart color. Apply a gradient fill to the plot area. Do not change the default gradient options. So we need to select non-consecutive ranges that we're going to chart. We've been asked to select A4 through A10 I'm going to hold my control key down and then select C4 through F10. We'll go to the insert tab and we're going to locate a clustered bar chart, which is right here. And then I'm going to left click to select. Now we have our chart tools so we can complete the rest of step number eight. Apply a color 16 chart color. So when I go to design and I look at my chart colors, I don't have any chart colors named color 16. But there is a note at the bottom that says, note depending on the version of Office, the color may be named monochromatic palette 12, which is the version I have, and that's the color that I will select here. Then we're asked to apply the gradient fill to the plot area do not change the default gradient options. So this is the chart area. If I click somewhere in here, this is my plot area. We've been asked to apply a gradient fill to the plot area. 
So how would I apply a gradient fill to my plot area? I would suggest that once you've selected the plot area to go to your format tab and on the left hand section, left hand side of your ribbon to select format selection. If you do not see plot area here, I would select, suggest you select it here as well. Either way, you would get plot area selected and it should say plot area. You would left click format selection and then you would get some options here about fill. I would click this option for fill here and then click gradient. You've been told not to mess with the default gradient option, so we will leave it at that. Step nine, position the top left corner of the chart in cell A13. Change the chart height to six inches and the chart width to seven inches. So I'm going to go ahead and close out my navigation here for my plot area. I'm going to click outside of my chart to deselect it. And then I'm going to left click in the top corner here. So I have my four sided arrow, which allows me to move four sided cross with arrows. I'm going to left click and drag it down to the top left corner of the chart is an A13. And then I'll change the chart height to six inches and the chart to seven inches. So here we could click on the format tab go over to the size group. And again, I have my chart selected and I'll change my height to six inches. And then we'll change the width to seven inches. Now this is an example of having your chart within the same spreadsheet as the data. Step number 10, <clears throat> change the chart title to annual visitors. Apply blue accent five darker 25% font color to the chart title and category axis labels. Change the value axis display units to millions. All right, so step 10 has us change the chart title to annual visitors. So the first thing we'll do is you can select the word chart title, click on your formula bar and easily type annual visitors press enter and you'll see that it automatically pops onto your chart. I'll scroll down here so we can see the rest of the chart. The next step is to apply a blue accent five darker 25% font color to the chart title and the category access labels. So we wanna change these to blue accent five darker 25% and our um, chart title. Since our chart title is already selected, we'll start there. We'll click on the home tab I'll go to the um, font color option and we can locate under theme colors, blue accent five and scroll down to the one that is darker 25%. We will apply the same one to our category access label. You can just click anywhere here to select the category as you'll see that home tab, locate the same color the darker 25%. You'll see that we've just recently used it. So I don't actually have to open the gallery back up. I could just select that and it will apply that color. Whatever color is showing under here is the color that would apply if you were to just click on it. The last step says to select our value access display. So I'll click those numbers and change those units to millions. I'm actually going to double click it so I can open up my format access dialog box. That's one way. Another option is to select it, right click it and left click format access. And a third option is to go up to your format tab after you have selected the horizontal access and to select format selection. All three will open up your dialog box to the right hand side. So now we want to go through, either you'll be opening it up here, 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 or here. The goal is that we want to modify access options. So you're going to come to this last option. If you don't have that selected, you'll want to, and you'll know that it's selected because it has an arrow uptick to show that that's the one that's selected. We'll want to come here and you'll actually want to go to where it says access options, open that up where it says display units. We're going to go ahead and select that drop down arrow and select millions. And then we can go ahead and close out this format access box. And I'll click outside of the chart 
for step number 11. Step 11 is apply data labels to the outside end of the 2015 data series. Apply a number format with one decimal place to the data labels. So we'll want to find our 2015 series. I'll see down here in my legend that the 2015 are the dark series. So I'm going to go ahead and select on any one of the 2015 bars. You'll see that I have the 2015 selected because those bars are highlighted. And you'll also notice that in my um, chart selection of data that that is highlighted up here. So that tells me that's what I've selected. Now what we want to do is an apply an outside and data label. We actually want these numbers right here that have been charted to show up on the outside of each of these bars. And they won't actually show up like this. They will show up as we have made the chart to show up in millions. So they will be individual singular numbers. So we want to go ahead and go on up to the design tab. You could click on the add chart element option here. Go up to data labels, down to data labels and go locate outside end. You would select that here. You could also go from this little plus sign data labels outside end and we'll select that either works the same. We've also been asked to format that number with a one decimal place. So we don't want it to just be a whole number. We'd like it to show decimal place. So we're going to go ahead and select any one of the data labels here and we have to open up the navigation pane to the right hand side. You could right click on the numbers and left click format uh, data labels down here or you can go ahead and click on the format tab and click format selection. I'm going to go ahead and do it from here to format my data labels. You'll want to get this format data labels option here and the area you'd like to go to is all the way to the end again, label options. We're going to go ahead and open up this number group here down here and you'll want to go ahead and go to category and select number. Here is where you'll get the option to now indicate how many decimal places you would like. We will select one, scroll down, and it should automatically add to it and we can close this out and you'll see that one data place um, has been added to the label. That is the worksheet for DC steps two through 11.